Welcome back to part two of the dogs and meet Lawrence Tuffin. Lawrence has been one of the country's leading open race trainers in 2008 and we went to visit him and we asked him where it all started. Well it started with my brother actually, he um, bought a little bitch some 30 years ago that um, he used to race at Hondingdon and Henlow little bitch called Mimi, remember her well. Um, we, were in a, we were in a working men's club one Saturday night and he says, uh, do you want to come and parade uh, me greyhound for me? I'm, greyhound? I said, you must be joking. He says, yeah, he says, uh, I've bought a greyhound, um, will you come and parade it? And that's how it all started. And once it was in the blood, it's never, never disappeared. Tuffins kennels are in Mansfield, not too far from Newark, Charlie Lister territory. A converted stable block houses his team of greyhounds. When we moved here five years ago, obviously with the facilities, I mean Charlie was Charlie Lister was brilliant for us. He lets Boris gallop because I only lived down the road from Charlie, so um, it was great. Gave us a good platform to start from, and we've continued it while we've been here. Uh, no regrets. Well, I'll never say there's no regrets, but. Uh, it's like any job, you know. I mean, I worked in the timber industry and people, you know, didn't pay you. You get the same in this game. You can't please everybody, although you try your hardest. The worst thing about it is, I suppose, is that the hours that you do put in for the job, um, it really, you know, it does upset you more, I think, when people are having a go at you for whatever reason. You know, the people do try their best, the staff work hard. Um, you know, and we just want to be successful. Tell us about your kennels here. Not a purpose-built uh, greyhound facility. Uh, no, no, we'd be better off training Red Rum or somebody like that from here. No, they're they're, they're ex stables. Um, the landlord Steve Parker, a great bloke. Um, he's been ever so supportive. He's done a lot of work up there for us before we came here. Yeah, it's not ideal. Um, we do have a gallop which I think is absolutely fundamental to any greyhound establishment. It's probably the most important thing to me, you know, for all your fandangled machines, ultrasound, all this, that and the other. But if you can't get a dog fit, you know, um, it's, it, it's very difficult. Yes, we'd love to have the pens on the side of the kennels, which would save us a lot of time. We obviously have to do a lot of walking, but no, it's, it, it's good, it's fine. It, it, it does the job and, you know, the results have proved that. Lawrence is assisted by head kennel hand Arlene McCartan and a team of dedicated part-timers. But looking ahead, he feels the sport must become more attractive to young people to keep the game alive. We are in a climate where obviously things have changed. I don't think the younger generation are getting involved in ground racing like they used to when we had independent racing. We've only got a few independent tracks now. I mean, I know, like my children, you know, they used to come with me when I used to go flapping and, and they'd parade the dogs. They can do that in Ireland, but in this country we can't do that. So I think there's a number of issues of why it's declining um, and I don't have the answers and I don't profess to either. But, you know, we've got to look at it. We've got to look at the overall picture and, and, and something has got to change else it will die. Um, and if you look at the crowds and that that there are at some of these big meetings, I mean, to be fair to Nottingham, I mean, the two big meetings they've had there the last couple of years have probably been the best attended Sky meetings I've seen. And I think a lot of that's down to the track and down to Bedford. I just wish more people could get involved, but I think we, we don't allow people, it's like a lot of tracks now don't have paddocks, you know, where people can go and see the dogs before racing. You know, they come out on the track, but in horse racing, the owners can go and see the dog, they can go and see the horses, um, stand there with the trainer, have a chat and all that before the jockey gets jumped up. You know, we, we seem to put people off rather than encourage people to get involved. In terms of numbers of open race winners, 2008 has been the best year yet for the Tuffing Camp. They've sent out finalists in no less than five Category 1 events. It's been a case of close, but no cigar. We haven't won anything yet, which has been very disappointing for us this year. Um, it's been absolutely, you know, to lose two nicks and then land up with Commander Chief in a, in, in a space of a couple of weeks was absolutely brilliant. Uh, the dog's done us absolutely proud. Um, you know, along with the million mage, she's been a you know, true stalwart for the kennel this year. Unfortunately, she injured herself in the last race, but, you know, all being well, she should be back next year. Um, you know, we just need that bit of luck just to win that big competition, which would be fantastic for everybody and make all the hard work very worthwhile. 
A finalist in the Sussex Cup at Hove after moving to Taffins base after the derby, Commander Chief was stepped up in trip and reached the gold collar final here at Bellevue. But Taffin feels his future might not lie over the stayers' trip. Basically, I think the dog has a lot of middle pace. Um, and when you've got dogs coming back at you that don't quite see out the trip, you know, it makes him look like he stays, you know, and he's going to be a true dog over six bends. I've always had that little bit of doubt in the back of my mind whether he is a true stayer. And I think it's proved that perhaps he isn't. 590, maybe up to 630, Mon more, you know, would but to me would be his limit. Um, but he's an absolutely fantastic dog to have. He's had a few little problems recently, um, but he'll be back in the new year. He'll be taking on all the four Ben competitions again, I'm sure. Um, and if we're still there in one piece, I'm sure he'll go back to Wimbledon for the derby. One of Lawrence's proudest moments in the sport so far was parading St. Ledger finalist Go Big Hitter at Wimbledon recently for owner Steve Taylor. I was absolutely delighted for Steve when he got to the final. Couldn't believe it. You know, the dog came in there. You know, he did himself really proud and, you know, Bubbly Totty was a very worthy winner of the final. Um, you know, it was just a great honour to be involved in the race. Where do you think he's best placed? Well, again, I think a short six bends. I don't think, he, you know, he'll never make up into a 680 or 700 metre dog. 630, 640, ideal for him. And again, it's just, just getting the draw which I suppose we all need, a bit of luck in running, and I think as he gets a little bit older, you know, you'll, you'll see a lot better dog. And remaining in the stayers division, you seem to have a, unearthed a new one there in Greedy Bridie. Yeah, quite by chance, really, because um, we tried her over. She, she wasn't really doing it at Nottingham in the first few races. I just really, I, I, I put her in a maiden at, not, at uh, Henlow over 460, and, you know, I saw this tiny little white thing come from off the last bend, absolutely fly home, just got beat half a length, but must have been half, you know, 15 lengths clear at the drop-off. And from that point on, she's looked like a stayer, and she's been, to be honest, she's been absolutely brilliant. Um, she now goes to Coventry for the St Ledger there, and I think she has a very realistic chance. So plenty to look forward to with Greedy Bridie anyway in the next few months. Uh, anything else in the kennel we should be keeping our eyes out for? Yeah, we've got a nice little pup just come in. Um, Droop is Lancelot. Um, I think he'll have his name changed to uh, Commander Class, because uh, it belongs to Miles Anderton and Daryl Bear. Um, smashing looking little dog. Um, not too big, which is nice to see. Um, you know, he comes over, he's got quite a good reputation as a, you know, on the schooling track. Keep my fingers crossed that he does the business, you know, but probably won't see him this year anyway. It'll be next year before he, he, he probably makes the track, um, you know, and hopefully he'll progress and be, be a top class dog for us next year. So as he sits down and plots a path to winners in 2009, we asked Lawrence what he most wanted to do. Win the scoop six and retire. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I can't win the lottery because I don't fill out a lottery ticket, so I can't win that. No, I mean, you, to attract as many owners as we possibly can, keep the kennel strength up as we can, so we can have, hopefully, at the 100 mark next year, you know, and win them, you know, an odd competition or two. Um, that would be fantastic, but we'll have to wait and see.